Before we start off with this video, I just want to make a quick correction on the last video on the Kampfpanzer 70. Two corrections actually. First of all, I falsely claimed that the um, NBT-70 would have a slow reload. It did seem like it had a slow reload on the first iteration of their server, but that has since changed. Now both tanks have the same reload time. Also, I noticed how the stock shells of the Kampfpanzer 70 were now the Heat and the ATGM shells. I didn't quite realize that at the time, but since then I have played the uh, Death Server some more. I actually streamed it for 5 hours straight. I'll actually leave a link in the description down below if you want to check out the VOD of that stream. But essentially the hit, the stock shells of the Kampfpanzer 70 might not be very good against the um, T-64. Which is going to be a rather interesting battle. But anyways, this is not about tanks. This is about a... Awesome, awesome display of teamwork that I really want to bring forward to you guys. But you know the drill. First of all, it's time for a sponsor. Today's sponsor is the Free Eagles app for War Thunder. Download the app and use the code shown on the screen for 10 free gold needles right now. Hello you sex beasts and welcome back to War Thunder. This is the P-38K. A tier 4 American premium aircraft which is kind of rare. This thing used to be available for purchase in a bundle, if I'm not mistaken. Had the, it has then been removed from purchase, it has been reinstated. And at the moment I'm not even sure if you can purchase this thing or not. But it's one of the rarer aircraft that you can get your hands on. And probably for a good reason as well. At tier 4 and battle rating 5.3, this thing has exactly the same armament as the P-38G. One ANM-2 20mm cannon and four 50 caliber machine guns in the nose. So notice that the 50 cals only have the early war belts. In fact, most of the accuracy is very very similar if not the same to the early P-38G. So why is the battle rating so much higher? Well, it's down to the engines. The P-38K gets two much, much beefy engines with 1854 horsepower each on war emergency power. On top of that you also get bigger and wider props which help with the prop efficiency. This gives this aircraft a climb rate of 24 meters per second and a top speed of 724 km per hour at around 6 km altitude. And this doesn't really seem like too much when just looking at the numbers, but what I can tell you from the gameplay is that this thing can climb with Spitfires. It's probably one of the, if not the best climbing American aircraft at this tier, which is a huge benefit for this thing. Of course, you still suffer from the um, from the regular problems that B-38s tend to have with compression at higher speeds, a mediocre roll rate and not being very turn sustainable, let's say. The b 1 will definitely out turn you. But you're kind of going to see what we are going to mention in this gameplay. Now, I want you to pay attention to a particular player in this match. This player is called Equinox and he's flying the Spitfire F Mark 14E, if I'm not mistaken. Now, the British and the American teams in ARB have always had a interesting relationship. Generally, the Americans perform better at higher altitude and have faster aircraft with more ammunition, whereas the British with the Spitfires tend to have um, aircraft that can perform well at low altitudes and are much more maneuverable, but not quite as fast. Now, when you combine these two types of gameplay, for example, when you are in a 2 versus 1 against an aircraft, this can be extremely, extremely powerful. You see, the P-38 by itself is a decent aircraft, but you can't really do much in terms of 1 versus 1 dogfights. You definitely rely on your altitude and your energy retention to kill the enemy. However, the guns are honestly underwhelming in my own experience. I really have problems getting kills with these guns. It's mostly just an assist machine for me, and then I, I barely even get any crits with the guns. And since you can't really follow in through the uh, through the turn, especially in the dive where you compress a lot, all the enemy has to do is just try and evade you over and over again. Now if you do have a Spitfire by your side, this changes of course. If he tries to evade you, he's going to be forced into a dogfight with a Spitfire that he's going to lose. If he tries to run away from the Spitfire, you are going to catch him. Now it's time to climb up to 6 km altitude, we are flying against the Germans and the Italians on Sicily. Of course the Germans and Italians have kind of the same uh, relationship now that the Germans do. However, this, re this uh, replay was recorded a couple of weeks ago, if not over a month ago, so Italian teams were still somewhat new and inexperienced. 
Um, but once again, the Germans also have very fast aircraft. Not quite as fast as the Americans, I don't think, but a little bit more maneuverable. And then you have the tanks, which just have awesome turn rates and awesome, awesome guns. Now we spot a couple of BF 109s in the distance. There's a BF 109K4 and what seems to be a Dover Focke Wolf 190. Now the BF 109 has spotted me and he's trying to evade, it seems. I'm trying to get my guns on position. I'm just about in the range, but since evading aircraft is kind of hard to hit for me, he essentially just negates all of my shots. And I can't stay around for too long because his, his buddy in the B and the Focke 190 is going to come and wreck my shit if I don't pay attention here. Now front is Equinox, the player that I wanted you to pay attention to. He's currently being against by B409. Um, he is at a high altitude, the B49 can't really keep up with him, he's stalling himself out. I try and line up for a shot on the B49K4, but I don't quite make it on the first pass. My problem really being that I just suck with aiming. I'm a player that just can't play the same aircraft for too long, I get bored very easily. And as such I try to play as many different aircraft as I can and never really get used to one type of gun. Now Equinox is going right into the furball. He set on fire that Foco 490 who's trying to go with a head-on with me, but there's no point in me going into the head-on. He's already burning, I don't want to steal the kill from Equinox. And sure enough, he blows up. The K4 turns around to try and go into head-on with me. He is now being engaged by Equinox, this is a Foco 490 high, who I am going to prioritize given that I have the highest NG state from all the speed that I built up in that dive. Try to get a couple of shots in him, but my lead is not quite enough and he will be able to evade most of my shots. The 109K is trying to climb up to this altitude, he's still being engaged by Equinox and the Spitfire. There is one player missing at the moment, the 109 does a turn to the right side and presents himself perfectly to my guns. And sure enough, this time I do get a kill. Now Equinox is still doing a lot of work, I think at this point he already has one or two kills. I'm trying to, K or to keep an eye out on the skies, make sure that nothing is above us. I spot something in the radar and ooh, there's a G56, now this is bad news. The, G the G56 is not a particularly, uh, particularly fast aircraft in a straight line. However, he can catch me in a dive. I will probably break my wings before he does. Now he is equipped with a nasty amount of MG15120 mm cannons and he's also more maneuverable than me. Now Equinox has spotted the threat and he's slotting in behind G56. At speed I try to turn into an and I seem to be able to do it as well, but I have lost a lot of altitude at this point. The G56 sees this bit of fire closing in and pulls off of me, which gives me the opportunity to go back up, but there's no need, Equinox has taken him, him out, saving my ass once again. Now, the problem here being is that I am at low altitude. You don't want to be caught at low, alt at low altitude with this thing. The um, strengths really lie with the top speed and the climb rate. However, I can't really afford to try to climb right now. There's too many Germans at higher altitudes than me. And as such, I think, well, I can't really shoot down these Germans, not by myself. This guy in the Spitfire has been, has proven himself to be very useful so far. So let's try and get this little tag team going. Let's, let's keep the dance up. Equinus goes after the Focke 490, the Focke 490 pulls away and runs away, leaving his buddy in the B409 all by himself. Now Equinus is not quite fast enough to catch a B409, but I am. However, there are two more aircraft approaching from the side, the firebrink is taken out by the 190, there's a 109 uh, low and the 190 is coming back. Now, I want Equinox to have his back clear to engage at auto 109, so I dive on this B409 G6 and... He gets so paranoid trying to obey me that he crashes into, get into the ground all by himself. Now I do have the 190 behind me and the 109K also gets in. Oh god, there's now two aircraft right behind me. This is a very dangerous situation. I'm not sure what kind of cannon that K4 is carrying. It doesn't have a choice between a 30mm cannon and a 20mm. The 109 get the 190 gets taken off by the Spitfire, but he still comes back. They are really trying to focus on me now. 
And this is really something that I'm kind of used to at this point. I take a couple of hits there, but my aircraft is still mostly fine. Equinox does some hits on the 109k, I think takes his flaps or one of the ailerons off. The 109k is going towards the ground and is going to die. The 190 goes back for me once again, I do my elevator trick to evade him once again. Equinox comes back to save my ass and this is pretty much going to be it. Count how many times I've had aircraft on my rear during this entire game. Count how many times I've had to evade. And all of this at low altitude as well. I can honestly say, if it wasn't for Equinox, I would not have survived this game. There's absolutely no chance. Those three, four, five enemy aircraft would have easily, easily taken me down. But with the help of Spitfire, by keeping his rear clean, by making sure it doesn't get overwhelmed by too many aircraft, by making sure that the enemy is not trying to run away, and as such he can use the superior maneuverability of his aircraft, he got 4 kills, I got 1 kill, and we won this game. I'm not even mad, this was an amazing gameplay. And honestly, I want you guys to do the same. If you see a teammate who's in trouble, if you see a, an enemy slotting in behind one of your teammates, don't kill the aircraft, don't try to kill the aircraft that your teammate is already engaging. Instead, go for the aircraft that's engaging your teammate. The more you can keep your teammates alive, the more backup you have, and the more likely you are to winning the game. So big shout out here to Equinox and the Spitfire Mark 14E for just being an amazing, amazing team player. I don't want to note this was not a this was not a pre-made squad. This was a random I just met in the battle. We barely even talked in the chat and just had an awesome, awesome time. But anyways, lads, I'm afraid this will have to be all for today. I'm really just waiting on the patch to drop at this point. Probably gonna take a couple of days off to just relax. If you haven't done so yet, I recommend joining our Discord channel. You can find a link for that in the description down below. Once a patch drops, we're going to do some 64 custom, uh, 64 player custom battles and see if you can find some fun things to do. But as always, lads, my name is Marcus Boom, and thank you for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky Take a deeper breath and give it time You can walk the path among the lines With your shattered frame of mind Lose that you could always stay We can wait right here and play Until somehow you can find